from uh, friends. Uh, any wires that you received since your appearance uh, yesterday? Yes, we had several. I'd like you to see this one. Oh, Oops. there goes the pencil. Somewhere stuck in the jacket there. Here, I'll put that for you. Uh, it you. says, uh, uh, regret cannot hold seat open for you until you return from Europe. Bon voyage, signed the Mentor Motor Pool. <laughs> Well, that's kind of cute. Well, I, I sincerely hope that you do get through the big payoff. And since you may be traveling overseas, where specifically is it that you would like to go, Norma? We'd like to see Monaco. We've got publicity about lately. Mm -hmm. You think you might like to get a good look at the prince up close yeah, to see I'd what Grace Kelly sees? I'd love to. All right. And you have uh, two children, as I recall. Uh, do they, were they watching, you know? Oh, I'm sure they must have been. Oh, good. Comes Beverly with some fine gifts for you. First, uh, for you, Elmer, you're going to be going to add the advanced detergent for all automatic washing machines and some cashmere bouquet soap for you, Norma. And that's one of our cashmere bouquet orchids from Orchids of Hawaii. Yes. Just look around a little bit. That means he's a little bit more comfortable. And, and talking about looking around, when you see a bathing suit, Alma, does that uh, remind you of the time that you met your wife? What was this business about uh, having to lifeguard her, so to speak? She was a lifeguard. Uh, when I met her on the beach, yeah. I had to, had to wangle my own invitation to meet her. Yeah. And uh, she got a job as a lifeguard uh, after we were married the following year. And uh, she was spending a good deal of her time down there naturally, six days a week, and I had to go down there after classes and on the days I wasn't attending class to uh, beat off the wolves. <laughs> Act the chaperone. Well, you didn't mention this about your business. I know you're a newspaper man. What sort of things do you write out there in Cleveland? Well, I'm a, an assistant financial editor and a food columnist for the Cleveland Press. I see. Who does the shopping? We do. <laughs> well, it's a mutual effort. That's the way it should be. But from now on, you're on your own, I think you know. So let's get to your third payoff and see the other lovely fashions that you can win for your lady. On the sidewalks of New York, there's a familiar sight when you can smell spring in the air, flower fall. And I'm doing business at my favorite stand. Oh, here comes a pretty customer wearing a lovely rotary blouse. A flutter of with butterflies that come with the season. I can smell the breath of spring in Dorsey's fancy. And the rose for you, madam. Oh, no, take. Well, maybe this lovely customer will have it. Doesn't she look pretty in that beautiful dress? That's for you. And that Vicky Vaughan June and January is just in season. May I suggest, since you're going to posies, a garland of roses on this beautiful Rosanna cardigan. Thank you. Ah, oh, Nancy, with her head in the clouds and a lovely regular bullshire hat. She's got spring fever. Wearing the perfect dress for it, too. It's a printed Jerry Gilded, and if you're going to travel, may I suggest you carry American tourist luggage and, of course, a rose for you. Well, the power part on the way for that next payoff. I think Norma would look lovely in some of those things that we showed just now, don't you, Elmer? I'm sure she would. Well, we hope that you'll be able to win them for her, and not only for yourself, Beverly reminds me that uh, you're also, today looks like Payoff Partner Day because you are also working for Payoff Partner. I'm a Tantilla, a similar city, world famous, in the drop rock sand for Christian Benevolet, by whom? You name the man, and you'll title the play. The girl Roxanne is courted for Christian by whom? Cyrano de Bergerac. That is right. Yes, sir. Good for you. And, of course, that's as far as this payoff partner can go. Congratulations to you and to him. And yesterday's payoff partner letter was from Arthur O'Halloran for his wife, Marcella, 185 Main Street, Waterville, Maine. And, of course, he's mighty happy about how well you've done, and I know that your wife, Norma, is too. And now to try and start you on your way to Monaco via KLM, it's time to, for that very, very thrilling meet, meeting with America's Lady and Make, Miss Bess Morrison. Beth? 
And because Link and Monaco, nothing could be more suitable. So we're going to send Mrs. Manley off in one of our Dupin Ming coats, designed by Arthur Rosenbaum. Hi, nice Hi. to see you up here. Well, let's see now. We can arrange the flight, can't we, on KLM Royal Dutch Airlines? Please, Mink coat. certainly can. Have you got an invitation to the wedding? Uh, gee, I don't know. Do you? I could try. <laughs> Good for you. And here in the flight bag is your big payoff question. We can arrange something else, Bess. Fine. Thank you, Bess. We, we can arrange for a last-minute word of advice from your wife, Norma, before you try. Norma, what do you say? Well, I know how much you hate to go up shopping with me, honey, so I promise if you get me the mink coat, I'll never ask you to go again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Now, <laughs> Good for her. You're right. I remind you, too, Elmer, that I can read the question only once, and we must accept your first answer. But, of course, all good luck, and we hope that you make it. Now, you're looking for the big payoff, and we're looking for a very familiar American expression that many authorities agree originated during the war between the states, during the Civil War. Originally, this expression described the designated prison camp boundary beyond which a prisoner of war could not step without being shot. What is this very familiar expression? for the big payoff. The deadline? The deadline? That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Good night.